Thank you for coming to our fourth episode of Art Time Is Now. We're showcasing artists and magical memorable moments in Vancouver and BC. This month, we're featuring the East Side Culture Crawl, where 247 artists are going to be showcasing their artwork. There's going to be extended dates this month, so you'll be able to come and see it virtually or also by appointment. Beautiful dreamer, wake unto me. Starlights and dewdrops are waiting for thee. Beautiful dreamer, queen of my song, list while I woo thee with soft melody. Beautiful dreamer, well I know what I'll be dreaming of in its artwork and I hope you will be too. And I hope it speaks to your soul and you'll have original artwork in your home. Here in the beautiful Norman Rothstein's Theatre with Jessica Mankaderich. Hi! So happy to be able to interview you and hear all about what's happening with the Chutzpah Festival. The theatre is empty at the moment. Um, we're going to have a Chutzpah Festival November 21st to 28th. Uh, we're very excited about it because it's our first ever digital festival. We will be presenting uh, eight different presentations uh, to theatre, to dance, two music and two comedy and three of them will actually be presented here at the Rothstein Theatre live with small physically distanced audiences and a simulcast for those watching from home. So we'll now meet with Esther inside to see the culture crawl and the art exhibition that is showcasing some of the artists featured this year. So, oh, I'd love to on, join Esther. you. The... So we're here to see some of the artworks from the artists who are featured in the culture crawl this year, and it's a unique and special year. I was thrilled to see that there's more weekends and more times available for people to book appointments. But share with us, what are some of the decisions that have been made and how is the culture crawl looking different this year? So we kind of have a combination of virtual studio tours for those buildings that are not going to be opening this year, and then we have some in-person studio tours uh, visits where uh, certain about 30 of the buildings are open this year so I think we've kind of found ways to make a lot of people happy and also feel incredibly safe because everything that we have done has been done in conjunction with the various um, health authorities um, so in some respects what we lose is the spontaneity at the same time what we gain is that we continue on and artists get to show and exhibit their work and the public gets to come and experience it great now we're here with Esther Rosenberg to see her artwork and I've always loved how the art that you create is layers and the stories. As some people know, we have, we're, we're in Strathcona and we're next to the Strathcona camp. And so every day to get out of this space and get some air, I go for a walk and as I was walking I realized well perhaps I should be documenting so I have now every three or four days make it a point to go out and document what's happening in the camp I don't go right in I'm sort of more on the periphery but I started to look at and the way that people construct homes and the materials that they're using to make this place their own. As yesterday I was down there and um, I started talking to one of the women and she told me that she had been robbed and everything that was in her tent uh, was missing. So her ID, her phone, her blanket, she didn't have a flashlight and she was literally shaking. And there I am with my camera and I thought, gee, I want a photo, you know, because the artist of me wants to document this. And then the, the, the humanity in me said, 
Oh, Esther, put the camera down. Go home. Get a flashlight. <laughs> get a sleeping bag. And get whatever other resources you can provide for this in individual. And, and go back and, and support her. And so it's kind of interesting how yes. the art sort of became something, something else. And so I put my camera aside and went back down there and provided you know, Katie with, with what I could um, in that particular moment. So happy to be here in your studio, Richard. We're here today with Richard Tetro in his studio showcasing his artwork. We had a chance in one of our last episodes to see the mural projects that you worked on, and now we get to see your art. Mm -hmm. So sh tell us about yes. what you've been working on recently. Yeah, uh, well, COVID has been a very productive time, actually. Since March, I've produced a lot of work because I've been in the studio almost every day. So. Um, yeah, what you see around is a series, actually I started on a series quite dramatically different for me um, on Haida Gwaii, inspired by shoreline and undersea world and kind of the coastal environment of the, of the west coast of Vancouver Island as well and of Haida Gwaii. Doris and Michael, it's been a pleasure that I've known you for many years now. Yeah. And it's been wonderful to see your art and how it's evolved. Art has, for me, has been a thread through these times to really bring me joy and oh, yeah. inspiration. Um, have you found unexpected surprises and joyful ways that art has brought you closer or did that art has brought you some joy in these times? This was one of the first things I did in the studio when I came in when I was getting used to COVID. So I thought, well, I'll just try and make a bold painting of this mm -hmm. and um, that's the result. That's wonderful. That's the Crawl good. is a great event. It's a great event for people that love art and are collectors. It's a great event for people who don't really know much about art but mm -hmm. they walk through and they get inspired and they, it's awesome. and they keep coming back. Okay. No, but the art finds the owner too. Let's go and have a look at Michael's artwork now too. Sure. Okay. And Thank what you. I've always loved about your work is it's so bright and colorful and the imagery in it, it's so layered. I see I things in it. I do work in a lot of layers. And you know, we talked earlier, you asked a couple of questions about COVID related and I, I really hadn't thought about it, but when I think now as I talk, some of the paintings I did in the earlier, like March, April, they are distinctly darker and a little more maybe moody, depressing. And lately I've been doing things much lighter and brighter. And I, that's not from a conscious decision that I was trying to reflect turbulent times. So I've been seeing um, all of your travels and your pictures that you've had of nature and the things that you've been, <laughs> been doing locally as well. Um, has that been an inspiration for you over the last few months? Yes, um, I, um, I started to walk 10 kilometers uh, every single day since COVID started. And uh, I'm a photographer as well, so I absolutely enjoy nature and photography. And uh, I always say about my art, my paintings, that uh, I paint what I feel, so not exactly what I see. I may see something, a beautiful landscape, and then it translates in what I feel. Mm -hmm. And it has been very interesting how somehow I muted my palette uh, into more neutral colors in the last few months, and then I catch my myself and I say no let's go back to color Chutzpah 
Chutzpah is the quality of audacity, for good or bad. It's derived from the Hebrew word chutzpah, meaning insolence, cheek, or audacity. Thank you for watching our episode and stay tuned for next month where we'll be talking about artworks and how we can have a chance to celebrate our year ends with creating original artwork. Make Canadian art part of your day.